Hi, this is Scott Garibay, and today I'm going to be talking about Harlan and Hollingsworth. So, um, so basically, uh, which was a company that started in 1837 and built iron steamships and then ships and then railroad cars all the way up until 1904 when they were bought by Bethlehem Steel. Okay? All right, and uh, this particular company was based in Wilmington, Delaware. Uh, so, uh, so the reason why I'm talking about this is I am I'm very blessed. I work in the information technology field, and I work in Wilmington, Delaware. Which, by the way, if you are ever you know in the area, the Wilmington, Delaware uh, riverfront is very nice to visit. Um, you definitely want to check and be careful if you. Uh, range much beyond the riverfront, but the riverfront is very safe and very nice. Um, and uh, the Wilmington, um, the Wilmington, Delaware riverfront is really uh, quite exciting. It's a very nice place to work, um, and uh, and you know I really enjoy it. So uh, every day when I walk from my work building to where I get lunch, I pass a specific building. It's on the corner of Front and West. And, um, you know, I passed it literally maybe, you know, maybe I've been working there almost five years, like maybe a thousand times. And this building is very large. It has, uh, it's made out of bricks and it has a pizza place in it. And then it has a whole bunch of office space where a bunch of people work supplying IT services, right? Um, so this isn't my work building, but I walk past it every day. And um, so, uh, uh, this past weekend, I was actually on the, the Wilmington River River Taxi, and they had this, uh, like, wise old sage driving the boat, and he was talking about history, and he said, hey, does anybody know what that building is? And you know, he pointed to this building that I walk past every day, and I said, hey, I, yeah, I think it used to be a really big, like, grocery store, and he laughed, and he said, no, no, no. He's like, that is, a, you know, a boat foundry. That was a boat foundry where they also built railroad cars. And so I looked at the building, I was like, really? You know, like, and so then I went home and I learned all about it. And by the way, I highly suggest when you're learning history, don't learn about history when you're out traveling. Take note of it and then, you know, and experience it and then learn about it when you get home on the internet, which is much more thorough and, you know, uh, and you can take your time and read, read about it. I, I like to do that. So... I learned all about Holland. Uh, so basically, this building is the Harlan plant from the Harlan and Hollingsworth um, company. Okay. Now, the Harlan and Hollingsworth company started in 1837, and they built iron steamships. And they actually created the. And so, in the Harlan plant, they made the iron slats that went on to these iron steamships. And then they would take those iron slats and they would send them about a mile down the road to this big ship foundry where they would build the ships off the, essentially right on, on the dock of the Wilmington River, right? Uh, and actually of this this, ri this river in Wilmington. And they would, um, and then they would do these, these sideways launches. They would literally just push them out into the river sideways to launch them. It's pretty amazing, and there's pictures of this, uh, you know, and and uh, which it was difficult because there weren't a lot of pictures back then. So the pictures were really like late late 1800s, you know, early 1900s, and so really, really fascinating, absolutely fascinating history. I, I thought I was really quite interested. So um, one of the things that was really interesting was the Bangor was one of the ships made by Harlan and Hollingsworth. And uh, it was the first seagoing iron propeller, propeller powered steamship. First one that was seagoing, that could go out beyond the rivers and out into the sea. And so this is really a very historical land, landmark. It's really a major landmark in American history, right? So I just kept reading, reading on this. It's really quite fascinating to me, um, and hopefully, hopefully to you. <laughs> uh, so. Uh, so basically, one of the things I learned, I, I learned, you know, if you look at the history of Harlan and Hollingsworth, you can, I think there's some lessons to be learned. And one of them was 
One, uh, partnerships are incredibly difficult. So Harlan and Hollingworth had no less than four partners that engaged and disengaged and engaged and disengaged. And uh, so partnerships are incredibly difficult in business. Uh, I don't think people should avoid them. I think you should go into partnerships whenever you can. But just don't be, you know, don't be naive to think that it's going to go super well. It's going to be a strain all the way. I think a lot of times when you're building stuff and you have a business and you are employing, uh, uh, oh, get this, at its height, Harlings and Hollyworth employed 630 people um, in their operation, which was really cool. Um, so you know, because that that's major, like you know, and 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 it was good. It was good work that really gave productivity to the city of Wilmington. It's really, really quite fascinating, right? So, so one partnerships are incredibly difficult. There was one partner who actually died in a shipbuilding accident, right? So they're hard from every, so they're hard like from the perspective of getting along with each other and they're hard just from like, you know, your labor could kill you, literally. Like, now I think our safety is much higher today than it was back then, but you know, still, you know, running any kind of large business, it's challenging, right? So uh, the other thing I learned, this was absolutely fascinating. So. In the late 1850s, very close to when the Civil War was spinning up, Harlan and Hollingsworth got um, contracts for three military ships, right? So you would think, oh, bet, man, that's that sweet government money. Well, it did not turn out that way at all. Um, they uh, They got orders for three government ships to be built. Those ships were commissioned in the late 50s, late 1850s. They should have been ready and being used in the uh, in the Civil War, but they were not. And the reason why is the government changed the requirements on the ships while they were being built multiple times, which meant that the initial bids were way under. And by the time they delivered those ships, Harlan's and Hollingsworth actually lost money on those ships. Okay, so this was absolutely fascinating to me, right? Because everybody and his brothers now is like. Oh well, this company sent you know sold a, a hammer to the you know to the military for a hundred dollars. You could just go buy a hammer for eight bucks at any Home Depot, right? Well, you know, I th- the the older I get, the more I realize I think, um, I think simplicity is really a filter that we apply to life. Almost nothing we do in life is simple. Um, we just apply fil- the uh, apply a, sim- a filter of simplicity on the things we want to, which can be useful. We need to be careful. You know, are we are we being when we apply a filter? How much of the truth are we losing? How much of reality are we losing? What is the gain that that filter gives us? And what is the disadvantage of that filter? And who is disadvantaged by impl- by applying a, a filter of simplicity onto something? Right, because. It became very clear to me that the reason that companies uh, charge a hundred dollars to uh, to you know the military is because it's a government organization and they're probably way more difficult to deal with than any traditional um, um, than any traditional uh, commercial enterprise would be to deal with, which is really fascinating. Harlins and Hollingworth had such a bad experience with these three ships built for. Um, for the government that they 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 stayed out of government contracting for ships for like 30 or 40 years more right and almost and and only grudgingly went back to it much much later and like in like the eight late 1800s right and also so who did they build all these ships for right it's a pretty interesting question well they built them for some 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 uh, for some business people in um, in Philadelphia, but by far the 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 majority of all their business was, I believe his name was Char- Charles Hooper, and he was a shipping magnate Nate, from New York, and so he would say, "Bang, you know, money on the table, build me a ship," and then as soon as he got that ship, he would have that thing shipping out goods to. England and China and wherever he needed to, to, to do that. So, and they delivered, I like over 30 individual ships for him. Um, by, I think by, by the mid 1800s. And I think he, he ordered a few more even after that. So 
the majority of their business was done with a New York uh, shipping magnate, which was really, really fascinating. Uh, by the time, so they, they ran, you know, Hollins and Harlingsworth ran between 1837 and 1904. They built over 100 ships. Um, and, uh, and then in 1904, they were bought out by Bethlehem Steel, um, you know, because, of course, they built these iron slats. That was their business. And uh, very, very sad. Um, I, I find, kind of feel like that's sad that, that they weren't able to continue going forward. And uh, also, <laughs> it's another thing uh, is um, you could be, uh, you know, a rich couple, but it, you have a really hard time selling your kids on doing what you do. I think that, that you know, um, a lot of people think, oh, you know, there's just a lot of problems with handing an empire over to anybody, right? Now, I know, like, a, a shipping foundry, that's, that is a mini empire, in my opinion. I mean, that, you're, you're, you're building ships. That's pretty major. So it was, it, was, uh, it was really, really fascinating just learning about these guys. One last thing is uh, they also built these railroad cars. Um, one of the people, one of the groups that they built railroad cars was Ringling's... Barnum and Bailey Circus. They built custom railroad cars for Ringling's Barnum and Bailey. So, you know, like the, the cars that would have a tiger in them and, you know, uh, all that kind of stuff. And they built they built really grandiose all the way to very base um, railroad cars. And actually, just two blocks away from where this building is, to this very day, they, um, they actually determine all of the traffic routes for Amtrak right now. So, um, so I do want to end this video. I want to be clear about Wilmington, Delaware. I think Wilmington, Delaware is a great, great city. Um, I've been very blessed to have employment for well over five years in Wilmington. Uh, it's really a fantastic place to work if you're ever, um, you know, if you're ever looking for IT work. It's definitely a really great place to work for IT. Um, the, the city of Wilmington is doing everything they can to build up the riverfront area. And I was just fascinated, you know, and today when I walked past that building, I just walked over and I put my hand on that brick wall and I was like, you know, on this very spot, you know, they built the first seagoing iron propeller powered steamship in America. And there were steamships that were commissioned for our own U.S. government there. And it was really, it's really, uh, you know, just really kind of humbled me to think that, you know, just less than 200 years ago, um, you know, there were people building iron ships right here in America. It's pretty awesome. Thank you. Take care.